I've watched his journey over the past, I don't know, 18 months, two years, something like that. And I've seen him rise up like a phoenix from the ashes. And he's recently had some more accomplishments that I'm excited to hear from him. Josh Smith, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, how's it going, Dave? Thanks for having me here. Hey, man. Wow. How much have you contributed here to this community and this company over the last year? It has been so cool to have more of your time. And I guess more of your time has recently become available. What's new in your world? 2020 was probably the craziest year of my whole entire life. And that's a great segue into that. I, I wanted to mention yesterday, actually, I was getting back into some of the training and everything that you all have. And I had through some of it and I was like, oh, there I am. Oh, here I am again. <laughs> there was like a couple different trains. And I just kind of had this like surreal moment and it hit me and I started reflecting back on 2022. And I was just like, my life, you know, I thought 2021, I made progress and strides in my life. And then I look back at 2022 and I'm just like, how did I even, how, how, how did all this happen? You know, it's like somebody pinched me. Is this, is this real life? Like, you know, I quit my job in 2022 or Retired, I like to tell people I'm officially retired from the corporate rat race, living retired life, just been enjoying it. Wow. It's been a heck of a year. <laughs> wow. And, and remind everybody, what was your corporate job? Yeah. So I did sales, customer service, and digital marketing of all things for a coffee equipment supplier. They designed so, wow. and manufactured coffee equipment and we sold it on the internet. So you had three jobs, it sounds like. So you retired from three corporate jobs. Well, if you want to sales, double it all, marketing, these, and there was actually two brands in two stores that I was getting. So <laughs> if you want to double it all, it was like six jobs. <laughs> so that happened since the mastermind. That's happened here even since you did the five-day reels challenge for us. That's happened since then? Yeah, I wow. think it was September, like the middle of September, I'm pretty sure, was my last days with that company and in the corporate world. Wow, congrats on that, man. So how has that, and, and for those of you who are wondering, from what Josh's backstory is, uh, he really just got started in this community the same way that everybody, else, right? I mean, you came through the 15 day challenge. Did you have a secret side door, back door? Or am I, would, nope. you, would you grade your experience consistent with everybody else's experience at the beginning? And then we're all faced with that, you know, kind of quit and bail out or kind of continue on and continue to take those leaps of faith. So anyways, would you consider your entrance in now looking back consistent with everybody else's? I would say it. It's pretty consistent. Sometimes I get a little jealous when I see, you know, these these new people coming in here and they take over the top spots on the leaderboard. And it seems like they just started like a month or two ago. I'm like, what what the heck? You know, because <laughs> for me, you know, it was a lot of up and down at the beginning. You know, a lot of my backstory is starting the business behind my wife's back, her finding out about it from somebody at work, you know, quitting the business for eight months, cold turkey, working on my relationship with my wife, in and out of counseling, you know, getting that right, then getting back into it, having some success and experiencing all the ups and downs and the roadblocks along the way and the distractions of the new shiny products out there, the new shiny offerings. And finally, I feel like 2022 is just like, man, I finally put my head down and really, really focused and just the very short version of all of it. But it's like, yeah. been a lot of ups and downs. But I mean, the there is, it's pretty powerful that you took eight months off and that was in 2021, right? Um, No, that was like, so... That was in, was that in well, from, yeah, like about midway through 2020 um, into early 2021. So well, through Christmas, through Christmas, you were, yeah. you were there kind of getting the home front straight. I, I've been there many times. Also demonstrates the power to me of the fact that, you know, wow, you came back after taking eight months off, starting and stopping or starting and getting distracted, starting and, hey, something came up in your life. You had a priority that you needed to focus on and that was your choice and your decision. Whatever the reason is, most of us have something big that comes up. Whether we're able to balance both or whether we have to come back in and start over, it provides a lot of hope that you were able to come back in, restart basically, have this massive, you know, all these massive monumental achievements, you know, like being able to as you say, become a guest trainer here, earn great money. 
I mean, I, I know some of what you earn because you're an affiliate for us. I mean, just here alone, that's that's been pretty astounding to see you put up some serious numbers. But then to be able to go on and quit your job and make a real career out of it, again, after you stopped for eight months, I just wonder who in the audience that's maybe giving some hope to like it is for me because some of us, when we stop something, we think, oh, I can't go back or there's feelings of shame or embarrassment or whatever, which are all magnified in our own head, by the way, because was there any judgment for me? I probably didn't even notice or anybody else. It's just kind of like, hey, Josh, how you doing? Wait, yeah. you know, but we make it up in our head. We're like, oh, I can't go back. I can't do that. I Did any of that cross your mind when you were coming back or what would you? say to somebody who is needing to seriously restart and just leave, let bygones be bygones and leave the past in the past. Yeah. 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 I, I would say there's no better time than now. Like, <laughs> you know, I'd say that in back in 2020, I'd say that back in 2021, I'd say it last year. I'd say it now. I'll probably say it for the next 10 years. If you've been struggling, you know, if you started and stopped or you're thinking about getting started, like, there's no better time than the present moment, especially if you're one of those people who, who has started and you've ran into something in the past. It's the past. I know it's easy for me to say that now, but you can't change the past. You, you can't go back. And it's like super ninja hack for entrepreneurs, like people in general, life in general. If you can learn how to leave the past in the past, you're going to be a heck of a lot more happy in the present. That's for sure. It's a mandatory entrepreneur skill. Oh, I mean, 100%. It's either it's leave resentment in the past. And if you have a chip on your shoulder, that's fine. Use it as motivation. But if it paralyzes you, you have to do something with it. You have to put that rock down. It's because it's not really paralyzing you. What it really is, is it's like carrying around a bag of the past. And so often to be an entrepreneur, we either, as you say, need to drop the bag. And I think there's actually a book out there called Drop the Bag. Uh, and it's about, I, I believe it's about these kind of things, leaving the past in the past. You were a college athlete. You got injured. That dream didn't come through for you. And I'm really inspired by the fact that you also kind of used, you know, you didn't let that get you so down. And now you're retired at 33 and, and your body's probably healthier than it would have been if you had to come out of the NFL here around this time. What do you say about lost? You know, this is a, a saying that I got from 12 step recovery, lost dreams awaken, new possibilities arise. What do you say to the person who's had a dream that didn't come true in the past? I don't know whether it was a marriage, a business, a sports career, a job. And they're feeling like a second chance is not possible. Well, it, it's funny that you use the word resentment because I've been a lot of the content I made last month. I talked about resentment a lot and I shared a lot more of my story with my audience. If you have a dream and you give up on it or you quit for whatever reason it is like for me, you know, the college football thing happened. I did get injured a lot, but that's not the reason I gave up on the dream. The reason is because I got my now wife who was you know, not even really my girlfriend at the time, just kind of my fling, I ended up getting her pregnant, unfortunately. And so I thought it was the right thing to do to, to give up on my NFL dream and figure out how to provide for my family. You know, you have to provide, go to work, get a job, provide for your family. And so I gave up on that dream. And what I also did while, while giving up on that NFL dream was I also gave up on my dream of being different, you know, kind of like thinking outside of the box, not not having to give in to what society tells you to do. And I did. I, I, I did whatever I had to do to make money. I went and I got a job and I, you know, I told myself I fed myself over and over again. While I'm giving up on both of these dreams at the same time, I'm building up mm. resentment towards my wife, towards my firstborn daughter, because I'm giving up on my dreams. And as a human, I need an excuse for why I did that, right? I had a reason to quit and I need an excuse for that. I need a way to justify it. And so subconsciously, I'm blaming it on them. And what's happening is, you know, for a year and a half, I'm in the jumping around from different jobs, providing for my family, and I'm miserable. I'm treating them like I'm an absent father. I'm not doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing because I have all this resentment built up inside my heart because I blame them. When in reality, there was nobody else to blame but myself. It took me a long time to realize that. I had to do a lot of work in counseling, in just self-reflection to figure it out. But yeah. I'm much better for it now. And it's all, Tracy, it's all part of what took me here. Tracy said that was an unexpectedly real answer. Thank you for sharing. I agree. 
love how you, the frame that you put that in, because you could, as many of us do, choose a completely different frame or choose the old frame that you were continuing to see that, that situation through and continue to through. There's another saying in recovery, not taking personal responsibility. We actually create our own problems. I found that to be true. All of my problems, every single one of them boils down to me not taking personal responsibility regardless of what others are, are doing. How have you, by taking all this, I can tell you've done the work. I can tell you've taken the time off to go, to, to get the awareness around this. It's really cool to hear. Um, how has that changed you and how has that changed you as an entrepreneur? I think it's, it's freed me, so to speak, to know what's going on, to understand your emotions, to understand what's going on deep down. It, it frees you as a person. It frees you as an entrepreneur. It allowed me to take the next steps in my business Business. And more importantly, it's allowed me to take the next steps in my relationship, yeah, especially with my wife. Like our relationship is stronger than it's ever been. You know, we're coming up on our seven year anniversary and I got a letter from the in-laws this past year. My father-in-law, basically, he wrote me a letter saying all this stuff. And, you know, I didn't think you guys were going to make it past one year. You know, he's like, I can't believe how much you've changed, how much, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start tearing up <laughs> talking about it. But, you know, it's like, Man, not even not even just from the business, you know, the money and the life that we've created, but just from finally doing the right things and, and treating my wife with the respect she deserves and treating my kids with the respect they deserve and putting them first and being a leader from that perspective, not just providing like real leadership, especially for your family is showing up for them. And that's what, especially men in entrepreneurship and business, we, the fine line between wanting to provide and give your family a better life. Well, if you're working 80 hours a week to do that and you're missing everything that's going on in your kid's life, you're not giving them a better life. You're just another absent father who's using your big work schedule, your, your big workload. You're wearing it as a badge of honor when really it's just you avoiding your actual responsibilities. Yeah. So, I know everybody, especially when you start experiencing a little bit of success, and especially if you're doing it the route I took, you know, the affiliate marketing route, you go through these kind of phases where like, oh man, this is great. You know, I've made XYZ amount of money, but I'm only getting XYZ percentage of it. Well, what if I go out there, make my own thing now that I know how to do this, I could get a hundred percent of it, right? And you go through like these phases, well, I can help more people, I can impact more people this way. You start to do it a little bit, you get a little distracted. And you start to realize, well, this is a heck of a lot more work. I, I kind of like the lifestyle of getting to work for an hour, maybe two a day. If, if that's what I really want to do, I can put in two or three solid hours, you know, make some content, get ahead, maybe put a YouTube video out there instead of just some TikToks, you know, maybe send an email to my audience that will help them, it, you know. And then I, I start, often get, I often get people that have their own things and they're like, yeah, you know, I got my $10,000 offer, my coaching offer, you know, it, it's great, but I'm working like 16 hours a day. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> pump the brakes, you know, like, I don't want to be doing that. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's not a bad life being a content creator and doing the affiliate marketing thing. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. in fact, I, every time I start to get a little bit distracted, you know, I take a step back and I'm like, I'm like, man. You know, like a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I, like we, we went through the Yellowstone phase. We binged Yellowstone in a couple of weeks. And you know what? I was watching it from nine o'clock in the morning until one o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. Just in the middle of the day. Monday Good for you, Friday, man. Monday, That's Monday, great. Monday. <laughs> that is the retired <laughs> life. One o'clock to three some days, I'd, I'd make content. I'd, I'd work on my business, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. And I've been really just trying to take some time to, to enjoy all that because yeah. it's, it's really, really cool. And you know what, when you get to a certain oh, yeah. level and you create the consistency and you understand what works, you can focus on only what works and shut everything else out, create one of those elusive four hour work weeks. Yeah. You know, that's, I that's agree. how you do it. How do you take care of yourself throughout the day? What things have you done to with the extra money that you now have? Of course, you're retired, so you've replaced your income, but you're also making more than you've ever made, I assume. 
And yeah. so how have you upgraded your life? How has life changed some of those practical ways, but you, they make a big impact? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the first and the most obvious one is we moved to Texas and we bought a house that was twice the square footage of the one we were living in in Wyoming. That's nice. You know, we got a lot more space and we're, we're able to do that. And then private chef, I got, I have a little bit of chef envy right now because my wife and I both hate cooking. We just don't like doing it. It takes so much time. It's... It's not one of those things. So we're we're looking, we're actually looking into what it would be like to hire somebody to cook meals as well. So that's a that's one hey, of the big goals for this much, year. Hey babe, how much is our is our chef just for perspective? Two thousand a week. Ooh, that's 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 a little steep, but you know, I mean, up there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but but um it's worth it, right? Well, like, I've got lunch today, dinner at night. For me. My BMs since having a private chef have never been healthier. Yeah, I think we talked at the mastermind and you said you had lost something like 20 pounds since you started with the- yeah, well, I work, I've been working out a, a little bit, but that's an example of how I have with resources upgraded my my life. So you bought a house. So yeah. you bought a house yeah. that doubled square footage it, it, that from the previous house. And how has that changed your family's life? What is that? Well, what I have an office now to actually okay. work from. I, don't, I no longer got to make content for my kitchen table every day. So <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> for my family and the rest of us, I think the big one is instead of just having a $20 a month gym membership to Planet Fitness, we go to Lifetime Fitness now here in Houston. And, you know, we're paying almost $500 a month for a family membership, but you know, they've got childcare programs and it's not like something where you just show up and drop your kid off. You know, they've got different classes for the kids. Like the kids can learn yoga, they can do gymnastics, they right. They've got a play gym. They can challenge their creativity with arts and crafts and history lessons and things like that. So we could drop our kids off. And then they've got the cafe there, which is all organic food, which is all you know healthy for you. So we can go there. We can drop the kids off. We can get a workout in. You know, we can eat at the cafe, like eat better than we would if we were eating out. The max membership where I go in. And you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I like to pay for help. Like I go in and I don't have to use the brain power of coming up with my own workouts. I just go to a class and I got a coach who tells me this is exactly what you need to do. And they guide you through the whole workout. I'm in and out in an hour, get a better workout than I could get on my own. You know, it's, that's an example. I'm starting to get into much better shape again. Back to my fighting weight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to talk a little bit more about some of the things behind the scenes that people haven't seen or don't know about you. And you've got a million followers at this point. Is that right? Yeah. Like 1.1 1 .1 on Facebook, I think. 1.1 1 .1 million followers on Facebook. Yeah. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> You're famous on Facebook. I guess so. So what, what weird to say that, but that's crazy. I mean, let's talk about that for a second in your main platform right now is actually TikTok. Mm hmm. Okay, yeah. so can you make sense of that? How do you have 1.1 million followers on Facebook, but right now you're back in love with TikTok? So the thing is, like, I've got the 1.1 million followers on Facebook, right? And that's great. And I still get sales from Facebook every day just from, you know, maintaining it. But I've never really liked Facebook. I just went through that phase where Facebook was getting, like, really, really big for me. And so I rode the wave as much as I possibly could. There, there's so much just junk in, in garbage to me, you know, on Facebook. There's a lot of good there too, right? But there's so much garbage there that I never really wanted to go full in with a Facebook strategy. And so I've just been just been riding the wave, you know, and I, I, I maintain it. And what happened is, and I think I say this in the training, what people don't realize is I was still creating all of my content on TikTok, but I was creating it for Facebook because I knew what Facebook wanted and it was working for me. And so when I did that, naturally, TikTok slowed down a lot because I wasn't creating content for TikTok. I was using TikTok to create it, but I was still creating content on TikTok, so I had the presence there. Right. And then what happened is I just kind of got sick of Facebook and I was like, man, I, I really, really like TikTok and nobody's talking about TikTok anymore. <laughs> like everybody's like moved on, like, like TikTok has just disappeared. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start creating content again for TikTok. And, you know, I sure enough, my, my old account, I had like 217,000 followers on TikTok. 
it got completely banned. And so I started all over and I was like, oh, this is kind of fun building a TikTok from scratch again. And I think I just crossed like 69,000 or 70,000 followers. Um, but it was making content specifically for TikTok. And it was content that I enjoyed making more where, mm. you know, you can get away with creating the content where it's just text on the screen and all of that. And you'll get views and you'll get traffic and you'll get sales. But to me, I'm at the point where like, you know, I want to get on podcasts and I, I want people to hear me talking and I want to cut up that and make it my content. I want, so I call it talking head style of content where just a talking head, you know, and I come up, I have a hook, I tell a story about it. And then I have a call to action at the end of most videos. Like, and I like making that kind of content more because to me, it feels more valuable. It feels deeper and it feels like you can build a better relationship um, with your audience that way. And so I did that for a few months and sure enough, like I've, I've made money from TikTok in the last couple of months that I had never made on TikTok, even during like the crazy TikTok boom where everybody came in and did all this crazy stuff. I never hit that level of other people. And now I'm kind of like making content on TikTok again. And it's like, holy crap, this place is, this place is a gold mine. If you actually talk to your audience and TikTok's cool because it, it makes it so easy for you. You make one video, somebody comments, you just hit the reply button and you talk for 45 seconds. Holy crap. Now TikTok, you're, you're literally answering your audience's questions. And TikTok wants you to do this. So you're building deeper relationships with your audience and like you're, it, it, and TikTok is literally telling you exactly how they're going to send you more people but not just more people to make a video go viral. They're going to send you more people who actually want to consume your content and they're interested in what you're saying and are going to be buyers and not just people who jump into something, you know, and buy it and then never do anything with it. They're actually going to go through the training. They're actually going to, you know, they're going to get on your email list and they're going to crave more content from you. And then the next thing you promote, they're going to buy that too. They're going to be the lifelong customers. And that's, that's what I'm learning about, you know, my personal journey and about my content is like when I'm actually speaking and talking, I'm creating a better audience. It's not as viral. I'm not I don't have the vanity metrics anymore, but I'm creating people who actually want to engage with me, who want to learn from me. And as an affiliate marketer, the most important thing, they'll take my recommendations and they'll go get Legendary's training because I recommend it. They'll go use XYZ software because I recommend it and they trust me to do that. Yeah. So. And you've began to start, you've started the relationship with that, them asking you answering. Yeah. They're the student, you're the teacher, and that's exactly, or you're the person who's delivering value, either entertaining them or educating them, right? Yeah. Yep. That, that relationship is always established up front, right at the beginning, instantly. Yep. Who's who in the relationship, right? Yep. And if you start the relationship off, of course, and you're either an and you're answering somebody else's question, which is usually the first way they're going to consume that kind of content, right? Is if you're answering somebody else's question or they, they've just seen a video of you delivering something. But it's established right then and there that you're the you're the person who's going to be answering their questions you, more so if you're talking than it's if it's just on the screen right that's what you're saying when yeah. you're talking it's even it's even more powerful the relationship is established right there up front they hear your voice and 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 i think that's what a lot of people are missing and maybe even yourself when you started when you didn't want to talk when you didn't want when or when others didn't did, how, what did that journey look like from you going from not wanting to talk as much to wanting to talk? And even in now you're like, oh, I want to talk more. I want to be yeah. on podcast. What does what that journey look like? Because I think that a lot of people feel like they don't have anything to say, don't have value and just lack overall belief in themselves. Yeah. Well, it's kind of gone through phases, actually, because my first little bit of wave of success on TikTok, I was going live every single day. And, you know, which is great. Going live is a great way to connect with your audience. You're going to build, you know, deep, meaningful relationships that way. But I kind of got burnt out of it after a while of, you know, kind of doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I was like, well, let me figure out a way to, to create content. 
where I don't have to, to talk as much or I don't have to spend an hour going live every day. And it was like, mm -hmm. okay, I figured that out. And then it was like, well, this content is cool and it's working and it's paying the bills. But then now I kind of want to talk more. So I found that happy medium. I still don't really want to go live. It's not, mm. it's just not something I want to do at this stage of my journey, really. Um, mm -hmm. So I've kind of found that happy medium where I'm almost going live, but it's just from making a 45 second long clip or a minute long clip or a 30 second long clip. And it's more impactful because you know, I can, I can really think it out and it also, it helps me work on my content and my copy as well. Right. Because I'm kind of thinking through it where in the moment you kind of on a live, you just say the first thing that comes to your mind because you're reacting. And then you think about it after and you're like, Oh, I could have said this differently. You know, I could have maybe made more of an impact if I said it this way. And so it really helps you kind of work on your content um, in your copy that way. And it, I think that's really really kind of helping me develop as a marketer too is, you know, being able to create better copy. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. I kind of started yeah. down a rabbit trail, I think. So no, it's fine. <laughs> I, I, it's all good stuff. I, and so I hear what you're saying that kind of, sh you know, you went live and you were all over the place and then you began and that was valuable, but you didn't enjoy it. It was it was kind of working, but you yeah. didn't enjoy it as much. Yep. And and now you found this happy medium where you're being more on purpose with your content. You're planning it out more. You're yep. being more intentional with what you're gonna say and kind of the messaging and just your overall brand versus just reactionary, more intentional. Um, does that include plant creating content in in kind of bulk? On, on it, or are you creating it kind of as it comes? What does a, a day in the life of or a week in the life of look like at this point? Yeah, so it's a little it's a little bit of both, and I'm kind of adapting a new strategy right now. Um, where the cool thing about what I'm doing now is you can take your content, right? And when it's more meaningful and you're focused on your copy and you actually script it out ahead of time, well, boom, now you've got a video that you're gonna make that's gonna provide a ton of value for TikTok and in the reels platforms where people are going to actually hear you and you get to speak but then also you just take that make a couple of tweaks to it and it's an email now that you're sending your email subscribers and then it's three or four story slides that you can go post on Instagram to give value to your Instagram like so it's by creating one piece of content you now have something for every single platform. And oh, lo and behold, you can take the same concept, expand upon it a little bit more, turn it into a YouTube video and a blog post. And now you're checking off every single possible box that there is for affiliate marketers, digital marketers, you know, and you're creating more meaningful content. So when, when it comes down to it, a lot of times, I my phone is actually not, I can't, I can't, grab it right now but i set alarms like something pops into my head and in that moment i stop whatever it is i'm doing and i just set an alarm and i'm like this is a content idea that i thought of so i'll set an alarm and then i'll either set it for the evening or the morning the next day um and then i'll write it down and i'll put it in my planner like this is the content you know i want to talk about for the next week this is the the story i want to share you know if there's something that happens you know i'm walking down the street and i see some lady with her head down on her phone walk into traffic. I'm like, holy crap, what's the lesson in this? How can I share this like with with my audience? You know, that this lady was so consumed with her phone and scrolling on social media that she walked straight into traffic. Like, how often do we walk through life like this? How often are you working at your nine to five, just aimlessly looking down at your screen, going through life when you could be doing something different? You know, and so I start you, when you do it like this, you start to see everything as an opportunity to create content. And you're like, what's the lesson in this? What's the lesson in this? What can I teach from this? And you'll come up with the stupidest things like you, you don't even realize it. And, and all of a sudden you have this incredible piece of content that you thought was really, really stupid. But people are like, holy crap, I never thought of making mac and cheese for my kids in that way. Like, I didn't realize you could apply that to business. Like, so 
And when you use those powerful analogies, like what you just, what, what you just used, which at first it's like, what the hell are you talking about? Where are you going with this? Yeah. And then when you bring it home with a powerful point that relates to their life, it's like, that's the ultimate Disney storytelling adventure. It's just condensed down into 30 or 45 seconds. Yeah. And that's exactly how you feel at the beginning of every great movie, at the beginning of every great story. What the hell is, what the hell? That's called a hook. <laughs> that That's, it's getting somebody's attention. You jumble their mind at the beginning uh, with some sort of, um, you, you know, what was something odd or, or this late today? I wa was walking down the street and saw a lady looking down at her phone. She walked right into traffic. Here's what I learned from that situation. I think the people who have the attitude that you have that look, I need to be careful about getting too lazy. I need to be careful about too much outsourcing or too getting too far away from these core skills of being comfortable on camera, being able to make a point in 45 seconds and make it interesting. Those are skills that you've developed. You weren't good at those when you first started, were you? Oh, no. I watched some of my first content ever back. <laughs> it was probably a month ago. I watched some of my first content ever and I'm like, what in the actual, like, what was I talking about? What? Why would I ever put this out on the internet? Why did I do that? <laughs> so, but, you know, we're our own biggest critic, right? So we, yeah, we of course, nobody that. else thinks that. It but wasn't yeah, that bad, but no, it, it no, made it me wasn't. cringe, like looking at some of the old stuff that I used to do. What do you say to the people who come in and say, look, I've been posted on TikTok for a week. I've got 35 opt-ins. Nobody's bought yet. And they're frustrated. Well, welcome to the club. Welcome to welcome to getting started. You know, <laughs> like, but I mean, you, you just gotta, you gotta keep doing it. And I think the issue is, and it kind of goes back to what you said about just getting started and like, you can't, you can't reach a level of, you know, X amount of dollars a month or being a good content creator. You can't just jump in and expect to be there. It's not all going to be perfect right away. You're not going to have the business that you want right away, but the point is like you need to get started and then you take the next step and then the next step and then the next step. And whether it's, you know, three weeks down the road or six months down the road or two years down the road, you know, eventually, if you're taking the right steps, you're going to reach that result or or better. A better way to put that is if you truly believe that you're going to reach that result, then there's there's no other thing that can happen. There's no other thing that can happen. If you believe it, you'll do the things necessary to make it happen. And I think where a lot of a lot of people miss the mark is they don't truly believe in the thing that they're learning or they don't truly believe in themselves. And it goes back to what we said at the beginning. People have a lot of work to do internally to figure this crap out, because mm -hmm. if you don't believe in yourself, it doesn't matter what the opportunity is you're going to fail at it because nobody else believes in you in the first place. So if nobody else believes in you and you don't believe in yourself, you're screwed. Like you have to be the one to believe in yourself. Like, so, because if you don't, nobody else is going to, They're and that not. might be a tough dose of reality for, for people to understand. But like, nobody believed in me when I started it. Nobody, nobody knew, nobody had any freaking clue what this was. People thought it was a joke. Like, but you, but I believed in it. I knew it could work and I was going to make it work. And so I took a step and then I took the next step. And then you look back and if something is, if you have 300 opt-ins and nobody's bought anything, well, maybe you're making crap content. Maybe you're delivering the wrong message. Dive in, figure out what chumming the water really is. Figure out what being the hunted versus hunting people is. You're sending a hundred DMs every day trying to get people to buy your thing. Well, maybe you're coming off desperate. Nobody likes the reek of desperation. Nobody's going to buy anything from you. You know, like look back and actually figure out what the crap it is you're doing and figure out why it's not working, you know, and don't just expect. And that's the issue with, with training too. Even the ones that do get started a lot of times, yeah, it's a clear, concise path, but you're, you're a different person than the person who created that. 
you're a different person than me. You're a different person than Andrea or Andre or, or, or Becca or the people who are killing it right now. You're a different person than them. You have to figure out the little nuances that are going to work for you. The path is clear. The system is simple. Follow it and then figure out how to be your damn self in the thing and make it work for you. Not just expect somebody's going to show up and, and do it all for you because that's not how it works. And, and, and I'm on a little bit of a rant right now in this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say it right now. There's some crap programs out there right now that are taking affiliate marketing over right now that people are doing X, Y, Z amount of money because of this guarantee on their damn sales letter that they'll pay you $10,000 or more. Uh, if, if the business doesn't work for you, yeah, good luck when the FTC comes freaking knocking about that guarantee. And maybe you should go read your fine print before you jump in a scammy program like that. Because it says right in the fine print, people, wake up. If you get even one follower on social media, they don't have to pay you that guarantee. You really want to be working with somebody who's promising you something like that. And then they have fine print there that's going to screw everybody over. And they're never actually going to have to pay the guarantee. And they don't have to refund you your damn money. Like, anyway, I don't know how I got on that rant, but man, man figure it out for yourself. People well, cannot things... do it for you. You have to put in the work. Yeah. No matter how many people tell you it can be done for you, it cannot. Certain aspects may be able to be done for you, but at the end of the day, you got to show up, you got to put in the effort, and you got to make it happen for yourself because nobody else can do it for you. We all have that kind of greed, and that's really what it is. At a core, it's greed. Right. And so when people are preying on that, it, it's 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 ugly. It's disgusting. Um, but you know what? Ultimately, we're all adults. And um, and there are and, and we and you said it plain and straight. Um, if you're if you're looking for a shortcut, you're probably going to find yourself in an alley. The th major thing that I notice about you from when we were at the mastermind together until now, it seems like your confidence has grown. Give us one, give us one thought on that to end the show, either a tip or, or something that you've done. I mean, maybe it's just been the consistency of doing things every day. I don't know, but have you noticed the increase in confidence and what would you attribute it to? Man, I, I would go right back to the beginning of the show. I think my increase in confidence in, in my increase in, yeah, I guess my skill sets and confidence in myself is just going back to, to, to doing the work and letting go of a lot of resentment of getting to actually know myself to, to not spend so much time scrolling on the internet and distracted by everything from life, but really being able to reflect and really knowing who I am as a person and being able to let go of some of the hatred I had towards myself being able to let go of some of the hatred that I had towards other people. Um, it, I think, again, it was just so freeing that now because I was able to do all that and I know who I am, I really don't care what other people think of me. Mm -hmm. I am who I am. If, if you like it, great. If you don't, great. Because I, I, I don't care. I genuinely don't care. And I think once you get to that, that space of, of knowing yourself that well, you just, you walk through life with a lot more confidence. You present yourself with a lot more confidence and, and you are a lot more confident in what you're doing because you know who the crap you are. <laughs> so I awesome. think, I agree. I think that's, that's, that's probably those, are those dynamics, right? I mean, there's the mechanics and then there's the dynamics and you're, you're talking about that inner game.